Well, I guess that's my cue. So thank you all. Uh, really excited to talk to you about uh, DCTX and DevCon. Um, we are a group of developers here in the Philippines. Uh, it was started 10 years ago in an organization called DevCon. And, uh, you know, as uh, we started uh, our response to the pandemic here in the Philippines, we were one of the first three countries to lock down. Uh, uh, we were requested by our government to provide help uh, in form of digital infrastructure for for the country. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the technology, but also wanted to make sure that I can share with you uh, a lot more about the community. Because I think one area that's really exciting about us geeks is that we have a common thread and I wanted to share what we have learned uh, together as a community uh, helping to, to solve COVID for, uh, for our country. So again, DevCon 10 years old, uh, we uh, got together to teach its other new technologies. Uh, we've been growing quite steadily. There's about 50,000 members in the Philippines today. And uh, when the government uh, decided that we're gonna go on lockdown, uh, a lot of technologies needed to be built very quickly. And they, they came to us and asked for help. And uh, really what's really exciting from that perspective is that as soon as the government came calling, uh, we sent a message out to our community and uh, out of that, you know, one or two days worth of, of call for volunteers, uh, we were able to gather about 1,093 volunteers uh, to work on four projects and divided ourselves in 46 teams. So it felt to me like we, we built the Apache Software Foundation in a week. Um, and that's really uh, the catalyst of all of these activities that we've now gone to the Philippines. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm superbly and extremely grateful to Microsoft. They were the first partner that we had that came to call and said, as you, as you put this together, uh, we're here uh, and we wanted to give you support. So immediately we were provisioned the Microsoft Azure infrastructure that's quite large. And we set up and started uh, building four projects here in the Philippines. Uh, first was called Rapid Pass. Rapid Pass is a technology that allowed people under quarantine uh, who are excluded from quarantine, and these are our medical practitioner and frontline service people that needed to go, get out of the house to get a digital pass in form of a QR so that they're able to pass and get expedited access through our checkpoints and so that they can do their job. Um, uh, second was a technology that, that created a logistics platform, sort of like Grab or Lalamove or Uber, uh, so that donations that come through the Philippines and into our warehouse get to the frontliners. Uh, third was a tracing technology that kind of visualized everything that's coming out of our Department of Health so people can navigate their way around uh, the pandemic. And finally, and most importantly, and excited to, to really deliver this, is to provide relief a God, a God means right away, uh, and relief is really designed so that we can provide uh, social amelioration to about 18 million people in the Philippines that are hungry uh, and needing help from government. So four projects got kicked off, a thousand developers, lots of chaos, uh, lot, lots of uh, uh, sleepless nights. And you know what's really nice about developers is that then when, when we're here solving problems, I think time just flies and we actually do have a lot of fun working together. So. Um, obviously extremely well supported by uh, the community here in the Philippines as well in terms of our government and the largest corporations in the country. We then set out to build our projects. So the first one's called Rapid Pass. Uh, it is a technology that uh, provisions QR codes to people that are supposed to leave the homes. Uh, it provides a scanning, a cryptographic scanning technology for uh, checkpoint personnel, police, uh, so that they can scan QR code uh, and, and project it out. Um, and then thirdly, uh, a mechanism of releasing and approving uh, people that are that leave. So in effect, what we did here is we created a platform for the country to decide how much quarantine controls we will have. So immediately we can start with maybe half a million people, um, lessen the restriction and open up to about a million and then go back to 250,000 uh, if something happens. Now, the way the solution works, we created a, an application platform built on React uh, and then connected back out into a, the, the Microsoft API platform and into a managed uh, database platform in the back end. Uh, on our first week, we had about 100,000 registrations uh, into the system. And these are people that basically talking about who they are, uh, why they're supposed to leave, why they're allowed, should be allowed to leave the homes and justify uh, their identities. 
Second is a platform for the government agencies to actually then approve them uh, and uh, then allow them to print the QR code. So this is fairly interesting for us. We wanted to build a fairly scalable and highly resilient system. So what we did was we encoded the data into the QR code itself and then cryptographically uh, protected it. So with the cryptographic QR codes, we're able to inject the name, the reason why they're uh, allowed to leave the homes, the validity period of the pass. Uh, when there are pictures, we would put in a picture. And, and then finally, um, uh, the location, the, the allowed permission, permitted destinations from their home to their work or from their home to the hospitals, or if they're a, a multi-city service utility people, they're allowed to do that. The key part of this is that we actually, in a couple of iterations, decided to put payload on the QR code. And by putting the payload on the QR code, instead of having the checkpoint devices look up all the time, we were able to deploy the system uh, so that the checkpoints that are outside on the streets uh, are able to then ver verify uh, the the uh, QR codes without necessarily an internet connection. So that kind of worked out really well for us. Uh, and we deployed the system uh, in a very massive uh, uh, state. So there was about 450,000 applications that came in in a matter of weeks. Uh, we then processed and printed 370,000 QR passes. Uh, we deployed 500 QR, um, QR scanner phones to the police. Uh, we trained about 300 IATF personnel. IATF is people that are manning this, uh, the checkpoints. And now it's it's in about um, 170 uh, checkpoints. So quarantine is the only tool we have for COVID since we don't have uh, medicine and vaccine just yet. And this is the tool of the Philippine government, actually, to ensure that we don't uh, have an outbreak. And so far, it's, you know, knock on woods work really, really well. For us. So... We're very excited to have the system. Uh, we've gladly donated all the code back to the government uh, and uh, really excited about uh, where we're going. Um, the work wasn't just related to software development. We also then deployed the systems. We configured the hardware. Uh, we tested uh, the system on the checkpoints uh, and uh, we trained the personnel and hand off, handed off the technology back to them. So it was a very involved process that included an end-to-end -end system of enabling the government uh, from that standpoint. And, and the community at DevCon uh, really, really, really stepped up, um, both in the software we wrote, in the design of the hardware, and the uh, encryption mechanism that we applied, uh, in training the Army personnel and police personnel, in creating the, the time and motion workflow so that traffic flows in the Philippines, uh, all the way to now handing it off the entire platform to the Philippines, which we now think it's going to become a long-term uh, solution for us. So that's the story of Rapid Pass. It's really what we did uh, here in such a short time. Um, we continued to build more things because we like doing more work. And I guess sleep is overrated. And, uh, you know, we wanted to make sure that while we're stuck at home, we're doing some work. So other things we're doing is to, to build uh, donation platform. So we built uh, a, a mechanism where people can register and pick up the donations. We take a picture and geotag it uh, so we know where we picked it up from. The cars then have logistics capability so that uh, as they move on to the destination of the donation, we also take a picture and geotag it uh, so that we ensure that the donations go where they need to go. Um, uh, and then uh, built all of that in, in, in the app as well. So we've been building a lot of, of, of applications. We did a platform to trace COVID. Um, and then finally, uh, releasing in the next few days, uh, the Philippines needed a platform so that we can provide registration and delivery of uh, relief or uh, help to uh, 18 million for poor Filipinos. So we built an app uh, that very quickly eliminates the need for paper forms. Uh, and allow them to apply on their mobile phones. And then from their mobile phones, uh, they're allowed to identify a mobile wallet or a bank uh, so that they can get their aid from the government uh, and then deploy that pretty quickly. Uh, again, all these solutions are not that complicated, uh, but the issue is large scale mass deployment, very short timelines to do it. Uh, and a casual group of people that, you know, normally we just hang out and talk about 
uh, technology, but it would the first time that really got together and did work uh, and delivered something and released and QA'd and cyber checked and, and work with the government in addition to all of that. Um, so this is how it works. Uh, people uh, in the Philippines, the forms have a barcode, so we scan it first. Uh, and then when uh, disbursement is done in cash, uh, we do take a picture to prove that cash donations or cash amelioration was given, uh, and then it's geotagged and sent out uh, to our customers. I wanted to take some time to explain more than just the technology, but the technologists, the geeks, right? And this is really one of the areas that I'm super proud of what we've done, is that we gave an opportunity to a lot of people that wanted to help, that are stuck at home, that wanted to be frontliners, but they're geeks and they're staying in front of their computer. And this is what we did, right? This is an example of John, uh, who enjoyed the time uh, feeling not helpless, but helpful uh, in the government. This is a story of, of, of Janika, uh, who felt like he is a part of the frontliners. Uh, or Ian Emanuel, who's coming from the very far south of the Philippines, who spent a lot of time validating, testing, and, and checking the technology and helping people on how to use it uh, and acted as a volunteer customer support. Uh, to Michelle, who wanted to make sure that the code we bring works, scales, uh, and is, is protected from, from cyber con concerns. Uh, to Darren, who felt like uh, not only uh, did he help, but he learned and uh, got a lot more skills coming out of doing work for the pandemic. So it's really been really, really exciting, uh, high octane work. Uh, just like Jackie earlier, we, we had a few days uh, to do all the solutions, but to me, the story is is beyond the technology, it's really the people uh, that made it all happen. So um, that's, that's what we've been doing here in the Philippines. Thank you very much. And I will send this back to our host. Thank you for sharing such inspiring story with us. I'm genuinely amazed uh, by how many people have been together for this project. Um, I haven't found any comments yet, but I have a question for you. Um, so in the QR code, um, the cute health worker image um, caught my eyes and I'm curious about the number. So is it like unique number and how does the number generated? Yeah, so the, the QR code, uh, the, the generation of the QR code uh, creates a control number. So it's a unique random uh, number uh, that people can then represent as a QR code, and that's what they scan. Uh, but there mm -hmm. are people in the Philippines that don't have smartphones. So the control numbers is what they verbally say to the checkpoint officer uh, mm -hmm. about their right to pass. So it's kind of like your, your ID. Wow. Um, in the QR code itself, there's a code, uh, actually a, a, a little bit of a code that actually then says what kind of an allowed person you are. So for instance, if it detects that it's a medical personnel, then they get immediate uh, high priority access to the queue mm -hmm. so they can get through the lines pretty quickly. So it was interesting because it was unprecedented. We haven't built any of this ever before <laughs> until COVID uh, and we needed to build it for about a million people. So it's a lot <laughs> uh, that needs to receive all these QR codes. So um, luckily, it all worked. Uh, a little bit challenging at the beginning, uh, mm -hmm. but it's, it's been now in operational and helping the country control COVID. Yeah, um, I saw a lot of comments. Like they really appreciate your presentation. So yeah, great job. Um, I think without technology, people maybe use domestic passport book for moving across province in any country. Yes, yes, uh, thank you. And again, wouldn't happen if we didn't have the volunteers and wouldn't be done if, you know, if this crisis and pandemic did not bring out the best in everyone uh, in innovation. So, and again, thank you for Microsoft. You were the first um, company that, that said you, were, you will help no matter what and uh, have, have guided us through the project from the very beginning until we released it. Yeah, thank you. Um, so time's up. Um, and I, it's time to have the next speaker, Ben. Thank you, Winston.